Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 87, and the question is number 4. Now, this is part, well, it's, it's called part I of part 4. We've already done the, a, a question previously where it says prove that tan beta is equal to tan of alpha minus 1 over 3 minus tan alpha. Now, for that reason, uh, this is a continuation on. However, the next three parts uh, need to be done differently in a completely different way, so it is actually pretty much a separate question. So the question reads, a particle is projected from the foot of an inclined plane which makes an angle 45 degrees with the horizontal. The initial velocity is u cos alpha i hat plus u sin alpha j hat, where these unit vectors are along the, uh, the xy plane as I've drawn them there. If the angle, uh, yeah, okay, so the next question says, find the value of tan alpha if the particle lands horizontally. So we know that this is 45 degrees here and we know the angle of projection with respect to the x-axis is alpha. Now the way of doing this, on, instead of going for the x prime, y prime plane, I'm just going to stay with the x, y plane. And the reason for that is that we're asked to find what happens if the particle lands horizontally horizontally like this. Alright, so if it lands horizontally it's difficult to, we'll say, relate that horizontal uh, that, we'll say, that direction with the x prime plane. It's easier to do it with the x uh, the, the x axis here, we say, not the x prime plane, but the, the x, x prime axis and the x axis. So what I'm going to do instead is this. If this is my incline and this is my x axis here, when the particle has finished its its uh, its motion, it will have created a right triangle like so, where this is s sub y and this is s sub x, and this is 45 degrees. So the tan of 45 is equal to s sub y over s sub x. So therefore, the s sub y is equal to s sub x tan 45. Now the tan of 45 happens to be one, but uh, we'll leave that out for the moment. All right, so that's the condition we need to use here. So the next thing we need to do is draw the initial velocity vector. So we're going to we're going to resolve it with respect to the x-axis. So it's going to be u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j, and u is equal to u cos alpha i plus u sine alpha j. And the gravity vector, of course, is just acting in the y. So g is equal to g sub x i hat plus g sub y j hat is equal to zero i hat plus g sub y j hat. So it's the gravity vector just acts in the y dimension. So we get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. So the x axis, the y axis, a u vast. Now we need to find the time at which the particle is after hitting the ground. So the way we do this is as normal. We we, def, we define the time at which the uh, s sub y is equal to um, something else. And this time it's as we said when it hit the ground s sub x times tan of alpha or tan of 45 degrees excuse me is equal to s sub y. That's the condition to find the time. So just let me fill out the pieces here. So s sub y is equal to u times the sine of alpha plus g over 2 t squared. And here it's equal to u cos of alpha t. So if we let both of those equal, we'll get the following. Like so. This will make a quadratic, but the easiest way to solve this one is just to take out t. So we're going to get the following. There's a T missing there, is there? No. That's what happens when you rush your head, you get things incorrect. Oh yeah, there's a T missing there, that's that's it there. Alright, cos alpha. So two things multiplied together to get zero, and one of them is zero. 
and the just we rearrange this we find that t is equal to 2u cosine of alpha plus 2 minus 2u sine of alpha all over g like so so I'm just going to note this down here so if we plug that into the uh, the velocity vector will be good now remember if the particle lands horizontally then v sub y is equal to zero whereas v sub x is not zero so let's just do that v sub y which is going to be zero is u sine of alpha plus gt so we're going to get v sub y is equal to zero is equal to u sine of alpha plus g times 2u cos alpha minus 2u sine of alpha over g. Of course we can cancel the g's here. Now the thing is the we're looking to find tan alpha so we need to turn these sines and cosines into tan and the best way is to divide by cos of alpha. So we're going to get 0 is equal to u tan alpha plus 2u minus 2u tan alpha. So we're going to get minus u tan alpha is equal to minus 2u. Therefore, cancel the u's and tan alpha is equal to 2. And that's the answer given in the back of the book. Alright, so that was pretty straightforward. Now, part 2, I'm not, I'm not so sure about. I have to say this is probably the only one so far that I've come across that I'm actually wondering what the story is with it. It says if the particle lands vertically. Now, a couple of things here. If the particle lands vertically, say if this is our incline on our xy plane. Now if it lands vertically, like this, then it means that v sub x is equal to zero and v sub y is non-zero. However, if you look, let's write v sub x. There's v sub x is u cos alpha. So if that has to be zero, we're going to have the following. We're going to have u cos alpha is equal to zero. Now u cannot be zero, so we're going to have cos alpha must be zero. And the only time cos is equal to zero is at 90 degrees. So therefore alpha will be equal to pi over two. And the answer we're supposed to get, uh, the, see, there is no, we'll say tan of 90 or the tan of pi over two is unknown. There is no such thing. That's it, not unknown. It, it, it makes no sense to ask what the tan of 90 degrees is. So that doesn't work. Um, let me think now. Cos of naught is 1. Cos of 1 is naught. Yeah. So, yeah. The only way in which the particle can land vertically is if it's fired at 90 degrees, which makes perfect sense. So you fire it straight up in the air and it comes straight back down. So at no stage did it have a it did at no stage did it have um, a, a velocity in the x direction, and the reason that is the case because if you look, it has zero acceleration in the x. So if it began with a non-zero velocity and it had a zero acceleration, then it would never ever be able to land vertically. So then I thought to myself, well, if it isn't that, what is it? Is is it maybe that they phrased the question wrong? Or poorly shall we say and what actually is happening is that we're getting 90 degrees with respect to the horizontal so or not the horizontal the plane so if I draw that's 90 degrees there now if that's 90 degrees let's just do a small bit of trigonometry here All right so draw another horizontal so this angle is equal to this one here and that's 45 degrees so this is 90, this is 45, so this here is also 45. Alright, that's just that, and we know, we found from part the very first part of the question, we called that beta. And in the very first part of the question, we made an expression saying the following, that tan beta is equal to tan of alpha minus 1 over 3 minus tan alpha. 
Now, if that is the case, well, tan beta, if it's 45 degrees, tan beta is actually 1. That means we have 3 minus tan alpha is equal to tan alpha minus 1. And what we get again is that tan alpha is equal to 2. Now, the answer given in the book is 3. So, I don't know, really, here. I don't know what to... Maybe I'm missing something either very elementary or perhaps I'm genuinely not understanding something here. So if you see, if you can top it, please tell me. So what I'm going to do is move on to part 3. And part 3 says what happens if the particle lands and that tan in, it, it lands and beta where beta is equal to inverse tan of a third. Well, if it's inverse tan of a third, we just need to plug it in here. Let's say tan beta is a third. All right. Therefore, we get three minus tan alpha is equal to three tan alpha minus three. Therefore, six is equal to four tan alpha, and tan alpha is equal to two thirds, which is the answer given in the back of the book. So, yeah. So far, I've, I've had uh, two mistakes in this, this, this problem that I couldn't do. The first one I just mentioned a moment ago, and the second one was when I was proving this formula here, I had it, uh, I had it multiplied by a factor of minus 1. So, look, I didn't really like that question. That was, that was, that was a strange question. It took quite a long time to do. So, um, I don't know, maybe perhaps it, it was worthwhile to do. I don't know. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.